Chai Freire. So what sort of companies are we talking about here? What are the most common links to modern slavery? Well, Bros, in our um, report that we launched this morning, we've looked at the statements of 102 companies um, that are sourcing from from sectors with known risks of modern slavery. And in particular, we're looking at um, clothing brands that source garments from China, healthcare companies sourcing gloves from Malaysia, and companies that source seafood from Thailand and fresh produce from right here in Australia. Okay, so companies that have had previous links to forced labour, they are legally obliged to report what they're doing? Is that the, the situation? Yes, so for the first time over the course of the past year, um, large companies with an annual turnover of $100 million plus um, have been required under Australia's new modern slavery laws to publish statements about the risks of modern slavery in their supply chains and the steps that they're taking to address those risks. So the companies that we've looked at um, are all sourcing from from regions with known modern slavery risk. Mm. Um, but what we've found is that actually um, over half the companies that we looked at failed to identify and disclose some of the most obvious risks in their supply chain. Um, so that was quite a shocking statistic for us. Yeah. So which body oversees and polices companies' uh, obligations to report forced labour risks? Who's holding them or meant to be holding them to account? Well, I think many people would be surprised to learn that um, the Modern Slavery Act that we have in place doesn't currently have any sort of strong enforcement regime. There is no real penalty for failing to put in a statement to the government or for um, failing to completely disclose your risks or your actions uh, required. And so um, the Act as it stands doesn't really have teeth despite the severity of, of the sorts of situations that we're talking about. Mm. Did you find cases of modern slavery happening within Australia, Freya? Yes, one of the sectors we looked at was um, fresh produce, the horticultural sector in Australia, which, um, you know, there's been countless investigations and inquiries into the exploitation on farms, particularly against migrant workers and people on temporary visas, um, and some really um, horrible reports of exploitation and abuse. So I think for a lot of people, they either think modern slavery has happened in the past or if it might be happening overseas, but it's actually, it's, it's happening here in Australia and in vastly in our region. I think there's 25 million people who are estimated to be in conditions of forced labour, um, with two thirds of them in our region, whether they're trapped in, in a Malaysian glove factory making gloves for the COVID crisis or, or whether they're on a boat in Thai fishing waters um, catching fish that land up on our supermarket shelves. Hmm. So if companies aren't reporting risks of forced labour, uh, then presumably they're not taking much action to address those risks either. Yeah, our, our research um, found that um, only less than a third of the companies that we reviewed could disclose um, evidence of effective actions to mitigate those risks. Um, and what we what we found was that while a number of companies were actually putting in statements and um, quite there was quite high levels of reporting overall, when you drill down into the detail of the statements, um, there was not very much there in terms of real concrete um, actions to try and change the way in which um, modern slavery is existing in those supply chains and to work with suppliers to remediate some of those issues. Okay, so what needs to change and how do you make that change happen? Um, well, Rose, this year um, the Modern Slavery Act will be reviewed um, because it's up for a three-year review by government and so um, we're asking the government to, to make this act enforceable um, for a start. If, if the government's serious about eliminating modern slavery in Australia's supply chains, um, it needs to reorient this act away from just reporting and require companies to take action. And in particular, we're looking at penalties for failure to comply, but more than that, um, a duty to prevent um, modern slavery in supply chains that would require companies to identify um, modern slavery risk and to take action to mitigate their key risks, as well as um, heightened guidance for business who are operating in these high-risk businesses. Fred Dinshaw, thank you. Thank you, Raz.